This is our Montlake 230 fireplace insert. We just had it installed last year, November last year. I think it's working out really well for us. Let's go over some of the things that we do on a daily basis. I'll show you how I start a fire in the fireplace. First thing I find myself doing on a daily basis is cleaning the glass in the front of the stove. I just use a commercial glass cleaning product meant for the creosote that builds up inside. It only takes a couple minutes, but it gives you a chance to see what the fire is going to look like inside. Sometimes I don't get it perfect, but it works. A lot of people have different ways of doing this. Some people use newspapers, some people use ashes from the stove. I just felt it was safe to use a commercial product that's actually made for this specific purpose. As you can see, it doesn't take much. It's pretty clean now. When we were looking for a stove, first thing my wife wanted was something where she could see the fire. First thing I wanted was something with a shelf on top of it that we could actually heat food possibly or keep a, a pot on top so we could keep the humidity level up in the home. And we came to a compromise on that. This is what we came up with. On our stove, you'll notice I've put a couple of thermometers on the front. The large one in the middle measures the temperature of the air coming out of the vent, the exhaust vent that the fan blows through. The smaller one on the left measures the temperature of the top plate. It's not exactly the same temperature all the time. If you build a big fire, you'll notice that the heat coming out of the, the vent is a lot hotter than the top plate initially. And eventually it catches up and it'll fluctuate back and forth between the two. We also have a sandstone kettle filled with water and there's also a teapot there filled with water. Our house is notorious for being low humidity so we try to do everything we can to keep the humidity levels up. Something else you'll notice about our stove is the hearth in the front of it. The manual is very specific about how far out the insulation properties of the hearth have to uh, extend from the front of the fireplace insert and we couldn't make that distance with just the tile. So we had to go with these uh, hearth aprons, I believe they're called, and there was two because you need a certain insulation value over the wood, which again we didn't have. And I just put that piece of white tile on the front of there because I like the way it reflects the light up back into the room and it uh, keeps some of the heat off of there also. What I do is I'll put a piece of wood on both sides. Similar to this. In the center, I'll find a small piece. Lay it right through the center. It's important that the small piece laid through the center is lower than the other sides. I'll just take some burnable stuff paper. the paper rolls, pieces from sales literature, it's pretty much surrounded with paper. I'll take some smaller pieces again, lay them on the top. The idea is for these pieces to catch fire quickly because they're so small. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll put a piece down across the top, like so. Most important thing about starting this fire is to make sure you have your draft control all the way up, which it is. I've tried to start a fire a couple times with draft control down. Not going to get it to go. Okay. Once we get a little fire, we're going to close it and push the latch down just a, a short way. Don't latch it tight. You're going to cut the air off. It's burning up underneath and you really can't see the flames. You see the smoke rolling around. Sometimes you may have to open the door just a little bit to let more air in there. Be careful if you open it. It's starving for air right now. That's why there's so much smoke in it. If you provide air, all of a sudden there's, there's no telling where that fire is going to go. It may come back out towards you. It's always best to remember too that this is a high efficiency stove. This is the latest and greatest emissions standard, 2.5 grams per hour. 
I believe it was instituted in 2020. So you're not going to get as much air through this as you would a regular fireplace sensor or stove. So some of your techniques and some of your ideas about making fires are going to have to be modified a bit. It's good to understand how the, the stoves work. Read If you have one of these, read the manual and it will explain a lot about how the stoves have to reburn the gases that come out of the, uh, the wood as it burns. As the fire progresses, you're going to hear the stove make all kind of clickety clackety noises. It's the metal expanding in the stove. And my thought is when it reaches a certain tone, that's when you close down the handle and cut off the extra air that's going into your stove. You have to use totally seasoned firewood in these stoves. You can't be putting anything in there that's 30% moisture content. It's got to be below that. Once you get the coals burning in there and the stove heats up internally to a certain temperature, you can put just about anything in it. But it's not a good idea because whatever you put in it is going to come out the other end as creosote. So try to get as dry of wood as possible in there to get it to burn. You shouldn't just walk away with that latch open the way it is now. You should always wait until your fire is burning efficiently. Close that down and then you can leave the area. You know it's safe at that point. These are my poor man's fireplace gloves. You can see I used the right hand instead of the left. It's a lot cleaner. All these are is welding gloves from Harbor Freight. I believe I got these on sale for $5.99. It's always a good idea to wear these when you load wood. Because if you get careless and you feel yourself starting to get burned, you're going to throw that piece of wood in there. That's not very good for the fire bricks inside. You throw it hard enough against the back wall or against the sides and you're going to crack the fire bricks and they're going to have to a service call to replace your fire bricks. There's a certain tempo and certain type of click that I hear it make that I know it's time to close the, the front door that the fire is sufficiently burning to not worry about cutting the air back at this point. Okay now it's time. You'll see the fire change a little bit as we close this. It'll get a little bit lower over time. The idea behind starting the fire this way is to create a bed of embers and to get the fireplace up to operating temperature. Okay, the damper is all the way open now. And I let this first initial charge of wood burn on full open damper. And then when I go to put the next reload in, I'll cut it back to half. And depending on the embers at the bottom, from that point forward, I'll, I'll put it most of the way down, if not all the way down. Okay, so it's been about an hour now. The stove's been burning. I'm going to put some wood in. I only have some small wood left this time of year, so it burns quick. But it's dry. Put on my welder's glove. Also, I'm having a fireplace glove. Turn the damper down, almost to its lowest position, and there we go. That's it for the night. <laughs>